everybody and welcome back to the United Stand. Manchester United 1, Brentford 1. The race for top five, embarrassing it is to say top five when you're Manchester United, looks like it's coming to an end. We are falling behind and we could not afford to, to drop points in this game and we did that even though we could have walked out of London having completely robbed Brentford there at the end with Mason Mount, scoring what we thought was going to be a goal that... Would, would, would send us through to three points, undeservedly so, we have to say. But it wasn't to be because the tail of Manchester United score a goal, concede, what, a minute later? It's just embarrassing um, to, to concede in that fashion. And it's unfortunate because we could have had three points, even though we didn't deserve them. But to break it all down, and I don't think anyone's in a fantastic mood, but we've got all the comments to guide us through. We're going to try and make it a therapy forum. We have Faz, Kev and Ricky. I mean... Faz, you asked us to sum up that game in one word. Yes, I did. Can you quickly sum it up in a few words of how you're feeling right now? Um, I'm really sorry. I hated... Actually, no, I'm not sorry. Why do I apologise? And Inners, you can hold that one. Ten Hag Inners, hold that one. There you go. That's the couple of words. Because Mark tells Outers to hold it, mm. so Inners can now hold it. Today, apart from Lissandra Martinez and Luke Shaw, there's no other player that you could have named that would have started that game. Maybe Mason Mount, who's obviously not played enough games in Manchester United anyways for you to see anything. And if you took that as a percentage, that's less than, if I'm not mistaken, 20-15% of the starting eleven, maybe, if from mm. the top of my head. Injuries this, injuries that. Everything under the sun is going wrong, apart from the manager's tactics. And that's what Mark will tell you, and that's what it is. But it ain't. It ain't. The buck stops with one person in a football club, and the buck has to stop with Eric Ten Hag. So, Innes today, you guys can hold this one. Kev, we'll come back to that point, but Kev, I said today watching that game, and oh God, I've seen United have some terrible results and terrible performances, but I said genuinely that could have been the worst game I've ever seen United play. And I know we drew one all. We didn't get back at 7-0. We could have been. Could have been. They hit the bar, what, was three or four times? Five. And, um, you know, there were so many different I mean it was, was it like record number of shots as well I'll get all the statistics yeah. up in a second but I think generally that was the worst I've ever seen us play I mean what do you put that down to like what what do you what do you look at that and think why why did why did that happen it's what what a game of, I say what a game of football from from Brentford's point of view if you're a Brentford fan uh, the way that it, the, the scoring happened late on, yeah, that they'll be glad to c come away with a point. But and then you you, you hear Ivan Tony and he, the comments he makes after it, you know, and they feel that they were robbed. You know, they'd be well within the rights to be ringing the, the Metropolitan Police tonight to report <laughs> a robbery because we were absolutely shocking, awful up uh, up until the Mason Mount goal, and you think this is gonna be day daylight robbery. Uh, what are we talking? 85 touches in the United box. You know, when you start breaking down and looking at stats like that, and even Alan Smith, who was commentating on the, obviously the Sky Sports or whatever that we were watching, uh, mentioned that word structure. You know, something is, is just not right. And listen, if Faz wants to go in on the manager, I get it. I understand there's people that don't uh, think that it might be the end of the road for Eric Ten Hag, but at the same time, you have to channel some energy into the players that were out there today. Because apart from Anana making you know a few saves and that, I thought, thought he was good in the second half, kept the scoring down. It could have been could have been four or five nil by half time. Uh, but the Man United that we've we've seen this season, where we get one half of good football, it didn't happen. So over a reflection of 99 minutes or whatever they played, it was just an awful, awful. It leaves. More questions than answers. It's just crazy that we're at this. We find ourselves at this situation again. But you know, does the book stop? Is it just with the manager? Do, 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 do you think for one minute the manager sent them players out there today and just said, you know, just freestyle, uh, let let them bypass the midfield, just run around. I, I don't want anyone to take any responsibility because the players again, it has to. Some of these players are just not good enough. We know this, but we, we've been getting away with it. I have a, I have a, I have a few things that I want to say, and obviously I'm supposed to be like hosting this forum, so I don't want to take up too much time. But Kev, I agree with a lot of what you say. Obviously, I've been avid to say that I want Ten Hag to to be given a chance. 
I mean, there's so many different reasons you can talk about today. I think Ted Hag has to take massive responsibility. His in-game management was pretty poor. I think the Rashford sub came way too late. And I'm, I'm not generally going in on Rashford. You can't individualise any one of them, them perform, anyone from that performance because everyone was pretty poor apart from you know a few defenders that I thought did quite yeah. well. But the issue I have is our press is absolutely diabolical. It's non-existent. And we, and we continue to do this half press. Either press or don't. And we get cut through like a knife through butter. Three passes it took one time for them to get in our box. And we have 13 touches in our box. We're playing pacey direct wingers against a low block and nothing's happening. But we keep persisting, keep persisting, hoping for a wonder goal out of nothing. Hoping that maybe a, a shot from outside the box is going to fly in. Because we don't have the patience to work it properly and we don't have the... We don't have the passage of play to, to break Brentford down on the edge of their box. And we can even manage to get it to their box because we struggle to keep the ball. I just don't know what we're trying to do. We're pumping it long, but no one can win the ball. And, you know, it's, it's like 50-50 if we're going to get the second ball. Mm -hmm. If you try and play through the lines, we struggle to do that to, to, because people give it away too often. I mean... Aaron Wambasaka with one of the worst fullback performances I've ever seen in my life. And he's not a left back, but Jesus Nara. Like it's it's honestly like everything that could have gone wrong could have. Two injuries today, you know, that's typical Manchester United. Conceding straight after you score. I mean, you've held on for ninety seven minutes, you score a goal and suddenly, you know, let's just let's just let Brentford score in us. Like the the way that we tried to mark through that was it was embarrassing. And you think the mentality non-existent, our away form, terrible, Ten Hag's in-game management and the tactics, shocking. And altogether, that's what you, you see, the worst performance I've genuinely seen of Man United, especially under Ten Hag, I think, and there's been a few bad ones. Yeah. It's, it's, it's mental. I mean, Ricky, you had a lot to say about the substitutions. Where did things go wrong? With the substitutions, or you mean in general? <clears throat> I mean, one of the things, that, what I'd like to touch on, first of all, is is a, is a, what what Kevin said about uh, about Alan Smith in commentary saying, you know, it, what what he was actually talking about at the time. You mentioned the structure, and uh, Alan Smith said it's you know it's to do with the structure of the team, and um, what he was talking about at the time was the amount of shots that teams <laughs> managed to have against us, and I think they had thirty one shots today. That's got to be somewhere near a record. Mm -hmm. Over 30 shots. Over 30 shots. Uh, and at the time, obviously, this was during the game. They probably hadn't had 30 shots at that stage. But Alan Smith said, I can't remember the figures, but it was something ridiculous. We've, heard, we've all heard them before. Something like 150 shots conceded in, in the last seven games or whatever it was. Uh, just a ridiculous amount of shots. I think they put a table up. I think only Sheffield United have conceded more shots than we have in the last so many games. Yeah. And we've played some ordinary teams. We haven't played all top teams in that period. Um, we've played some, you know, we've played Lu 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 Luton had 20 odd United shots against that. us, Forest had 20 odd shots against us. Uh, no disrespect to them teams, by the way, but when you're conceding that amount of shots, people might think, oh, you've played Liverpool City and Arsenal or something, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> um, Liverpool was a cup team. I don't know whether they count, you might only be counting league games, so maybe the Liverpool games included. I don't know. But it's not really relevant. But what I want to get to is when he's talking, he's mentioning the structure. And, and this is combining now with what Beth said about the press. This is combining with that. There was one incident, and, and we, we, all of us were sat there watching it together. I can't remember who said it. Somebody said, where's Anthony? But he's part of the press. Mm. And once you beat that press, they can't suddenly be back. So they beat the press. There's one pass, and I think Dalot was two on one. And Anthony's chasing back with all his might, but he's 40 yards behind the play. He's the reason he's 40 yards behind the play is because he's been on the press. Oh. Once they pass it through that press, you've got to turn and race back. We, we need to realise who we are and play. You know, Beth used to use the phrase low block. I think we should be playing with our wingers set back a little bit while they're full. Let their goalkeeper pass it to the full back. Let the goalkeeper pass it to the centre back. Let them pass it three or four times between themselves. And then when they get to the halfway line, we've got more players behind the ball. That's yeah. how we need to be thinking. We need more players behind the ball. Every time we press, we've at least got Anthony. Well, it was Anthony who was on the park at that moment. Whoever the right winger is, say it's Garnacho. We've got Rashford, we've got Hoyland. Bruno's always there. And quite often, Matt Tomlin is there. You've got half your team on the press. 
they put one pass. Doesn't matter how many players you've got, one pass through in between two players. Don't matter. Don't matter if you've got eight players there. If you pass it between two players, it goes between yeah. two players. <clears throat> so one pass in between two players, and they're on top of you. So we, we need to realise we we just got to start playing differently. Just Alan Smith's word: the structure needs to be different. We need to realise that we're not the Manchester United that we, that we used to be. We need to play deeper. Let them get to the halfway line, and then maybe we can can, get, can play a little bit more on the break. Be we're more not, compact. Yeah, be yeah. more compact, yeah. It is true, because it, the, the shocking thing was you, you're kind of watching that, and the amount of times one pass from the goalkeeper just wiped out. Mm. It was like the midfield was like non-existent, mm. and at stages, I said to you, didn't it, it mm. look like Brentford had like three, three, three more players on the team? But te again, testament to Brentford. Mm. I thought that they were really, really good today. Could have won by six or seven, didn't. So in that in in that respect, and Ricky's right, touching on about Man United. You know, we can't go down this Gary Neville route of we're, we're Manchester United. You know, well, wanna, what is that? I don't want to play part of the bus, bus football though. I'm not going to lie. It's not part of the bus football, Beth. It's just having a better structure about yourselves. No, we need a better structure. We need of a course, better structure about yourselves. It's not part of the bus our, football. Our structure is you know, terrible. Get, get your back four up near the halfway line and get a line of four ten yards in front. To be rather the than 30 yards in front of yeah. that. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It took, it took yeah. Brentford mm. two passes, one pass to the fullback, and the fullback carried the ball all the way to our, our final mm. third. What does that tell you? Yeah, I'm going to ask, ask, ask you all a question, and we'll get into some super chats and some stats. <clears throat> Do Man United <clears throat> play in the top five worst, worst styles of football in the league? Without a shadow of a doubt. Brentford had Ben Mee, Norgard and Pinnock missing. They had the whole missing, back four missing. Missing. And we, and we had like one dangerous chance and it was Highland and then That's the man like got... Brentford's reserve back four and we can't... You're play. having a laugh. Mm. People, ha people called four. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer PE teacher. People said Jose Mourinho's football is haram. But you know the fact is, people are scared to say anything about we, Eric Ten Hag. We, That's we the, beat... No, Beth, the first person says something and then people get the energy and motivation to say something about the manager. I'm not a big enough influenced person to say anything for people to believe me. But I promise you, if it was someone big enough out there said anything about Eric Ten Hag, people would start changing their tones. That is the fact. People are holding this um, um, beloved manager up such a high pedestal that they don't want to turn back and say, you know what, actually, hands up, we got it wrong. This Dutch manager is not the person who it is. You, because you, said, you said earlier... That that was more or less a full strength team. I mean, Casemiro was there. He could he could have played. He was on the bench. He wasn't particularly great when he came on. Uh, Martinez is now back and fit. He was the worst player on the pitch when he came on. By the way, Luke Shaw's missing. There's only two or three players missing. They've probably got more players missing than we have. Yeah. I was uh, I was about to say actually that like people think this is a new thing we beat Sheffield United because of a Dallow like wonder strike outside the box and yeah, they're, not exactly they're Sheffield United team. had 20 odd I shots think people, that day I think people need to like one thing that you can say under Ten Hag is that our away form no matter who it is is absolutely terrible it's in the gutter mm. like sometimes right the, the wins we have got away from home mm. we've mm. absolutely scraped Smashing like we've grab. scraped and the performance was terrible I, I've not seen mm. us go away from home. The, on, the only time this season I've, I've seen us go away from home and play a convincing win mm. was Wolves 4-3. And even that, we only won by one goal, but it felt like a convincing Probably win. Probably Spurs last year at home it was a very good game no, as well. No, I'm saying away. Oh, right. I'm saying away. Away. away from home. We just don't ever put a performance together. Why is that? Why is that? Is something that needs to be looked at? Is it the mentality of the players? Is it the is it is it down to Eric Ten Hag? Is the tactics not right? Do we do we not set up right away from home? Like what is it? I tell you what, I pay good money to know what goes on in training, and I'd pay very good money to know what's said at half time. Because nothing it, seems to change if, after half time if, ever. If the employees of a workplace are consistently being told to do something and it's not coming to fruition, then they are going to feel demotivated. That is how a workplace works. 100% people can every single day of the week bash these players. They're not good enough, this, that, the other. Well, neither are probably Luton players to get into Manchester United. How good are Sheffield United or Brentford? And a, a good working organisation who, who, who are doing a decent job will have good motivated 
employees. Man United's manager is failing miserably with the organization, absolutely miserably. He's fallen out with players, he's fallen out with players who've had Champions League that he could only dream of, he's fallen out with young players, he gets tactics wrong. All of these things play into a part with players doubting the manager. You've all been, if you've played football or been in environments like this, you know you start questioning, you start telling yourself, I could do a better job than this manager. You start, uh, do you not do this? Have, you, have people not worked in environments before, in offices and stuff? You look at your manager and you think you're, a, you're an idiot. I could do a better job than you. So what you're saying is then that the, the players have down tools? Yes. Because the manager well, what is does setting... that tell you about the players? I don't think the players, the have, doubt, is... I don't think the players have down tools. Ma ma down tool how, is how a different they, word. How are they able to go to Anfield when nobody gives us a hope in hell? Right. We get a nil-nil result, which again, every Scousers were carrying on saying it's going to be six or seven again. Yeah. And I bet, I, w I wouldn't even know the st statistics from that game, yeah. but they wouldn't have had as many shots as like Brentford Liverpool did today in the touches. Like Brentford did. No. Near. But the no thing is, those that was a game plan and we actually sat in and we could see what United were doing at Anfield in that game that we got a draw. Those odd games, Kev, where, where it's like you put your everything on the line because it's a massive rivalry. Players just understand, fans understand. It's, it's the history behind those fixtures that you put everything through. You get a moment of magic and that's what happens. We didn't bop Liverpool out the park and, you know, Liverpool would prob probably paid way better than us anyways, right? Even the, the draw that we got at Anfield, you know, it, it was one of them games where you just try and get anything out of the game. That's what happens. But that's not your bread. And butter. The bread and butter is beating your Brentfords, your Sheffields, your Fulhams. That's, and that's your bread why and butter. I question the mentality of the players. How can you get up for an FA Cup game, but then, you know, against Liverpool, put in a performance like that, show fight, desire, passion, whatever, but then on a Saturday night against Brentford away, they are, they are, it re all reverts. I get, I get your point, but the difference, like, teams like Brentford, no disrespect because they were way better than us, set up differently to, you know, a Liverpool. Like each team sets up completely differently. But I do I do get what you're saying. It's it's we have well, these good didn't sit we back. have, that was we have just these good a constant results. Constant barrage yeah. of attacks. We have these good results where it's like, you know, for example the Liverpool game and I said today on the build up show, I hope this isn't another Fulham or Bournemouth and it, and it easily could have been. Like we didn't deserve a point. And, yeah. and Thomas Frank has literally said, we beat United 4-0 last season and I thought we performed better today. It's our best of the season. We've had the most shots ever in a Premier League game. Like, it's embarrassing. Like, it's embarrassing. Like, Sheffield United or Luton could have gone to Brentford today and put up a better showing than us. Like, it is... And, and this it's not the first time. What worries me, what worries me massively, is Man United this season... How many lucky wins have we had? Oh my god! How many times we've got McTominay saved us? This year, and said this last year. Sorry, not this year. Mm. It's just we said this last year. Where could we be in the table if certain yeah. things, yeah. you know, yeah. like yeah. you know, the butterfly effect? It's it's worrying. It's not as if we. Yeah. It's not as if we deserve to be where we are in the table. I sometimes look. Yeah, at we're it. looking up and trying to get a little bit higher, but we're looking at we're not quite a bit lower, are we? Yeah. yeah. The, the, the audacity of this manager as well to say we don't have the centre back, so we can't play the routines. Like he only takes his preferred centre backs on one corner of the training pitch and trains them and doesn't you, train the rest the of them. Thing is, what does Thomas Frank do then? You can't blame injuries at all today because Thomas Frank has got a worse injury crisis than we. Like you can't. I agree with that. You can blame injuries for a lot of our season because it's been relentless. And I think today Lindelof getting injured was like our fifty-third injury of the season, which is absolutely crazy. But let's not pretend like we're the only team dealing with it. You know, there's been other teams dealing with it. Newcastle in, are in a crisis. Brentford have been in a huge crisis. Wolves only have. What is it, like 12 senior players fit right now? Like, this does happen and it's it's unfortunate and it, and it has slowed down the progression, I feel like, of, of our style developing. But it's not an excuse for games like this. It, it, it's not. Well, you I just mean, mentioned earlier, didn't you? You said, uh, is our style of football one, one of the worst, uh, you know, like in the Premier League? What is the style of football? Mm. What, what is it at the minute? Because... It really does seem to be, and I think you mentioned that word, uh, like moments, that we're living in moments. You've got a player. Like, I, I don't want, I'm not just going in on Marcus Rashford, but if you're talking about a performance today, you know, for Mason Mount to come on and do more within kind of five minutes than Rashford did all game, I, I, just, I just don't get it. But what is the style of play? We're, we're, is Ten Hag hoping that a player like Rashford, I'll keep him on the pitch just in case he can produce a moment of magic? But he's yeah, not, that's, that's what he's happening. He's not doing it on a consistent basis, so it's not like, 
oh, he's in top, top form, so I'm going to have to keep him on the pitch because if an opportunity arises or he can get the cut, cut in on his right foot, he might score an absolute world. I, I just don't get it from that sense. And again, it, the decisions he makes, he, he'll have to live and die by the sword because mm. ultimately, if it does go the way that, well, the press are kind of predicting, mm. then he won't have anybody to kind of blame apart from himself. You know, the in-game management, these are management things that he's trying to, you know, navigate at Manchester United. Uh, it will see him sacked. We've got some super chats in and we'll move on to the next bit of the show. Siraj Mucker G says, bottle job players, Rashi, Bruno... Um, Aaron Wambasaka, Scott and weird Eric Ten Hag decisions. It's a recipe for outright failure. Something's wrong either with Eric Ten Hag or the structure. Negado says, Champions League gone. Let's focus on getting better. Um, not sure on Eric Ten Hag, I think that means. Red Army says, I hope people stop the Martinez and Varane hype. Aren't good enough getting spun out there by Brentford's B team. International 2675, something clearly has gone wrong with the setup and has never been addressed, dominated and outplayed by Brentford. No game plan. Somehow, most focus will go on to Rashford. Enrique Manjara says, I trusted Eric Ten Hag, but he's never taken responsibility for performances. Performances, tactics, substitutions and team selections have been poor ever since his tenure. Wayne Al Ablett says, Bruno needs to stick to his position. Every time we get the ball, it's long ball. Bruno is never where he should be. Also, the build-up play is so slow. Thomas McArdle, terrible performance. We are not good enough. Who do these? And um, Ed David Eze says, who do these players think they are not to uh, not to be individualised? Beth, Bruno, and Rashford are not good enough. Scott McTominay should be moved on in the summer. Josh Khan says, we have to start Mount Casemiro Mena with Ahmad Hoyland and Ganacho for the next couple of games. Can't be playing frauds every week. If a cleaner can't use a mop, they don't keep their job. Flash Talk says, team has given up. Can't believe they want Southgate. Wayne Ramsey says, I thought we only have this show after a game of football. I just saw Brentford at a practice game. Keel yeah. Robinson says, I think Tuchel could get more of these players. Um, Tom Edwards says, Ten Hag in. I'm on board now too. We deserve him. Say goodbye to next season too. Kevin Gray says, making same mistakes. Who is telling them to do it? Um, Wookie says, today's worst players not for sale. Is it a coincidence? And Cad says, a member for 21 months. Man United is like a third world country with a Gucci belt on. I wonder if Ineos regrets buying a stake. They have a lot to do with only 25%. And then Jim says, remember you picking up McTominay and slating Casemiro. We weren't slating Casemiro. We no. just said we would have started McTominay in this game um, on the build-up show. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyway, let's... I mean, let's talk a little bit more about this. I do want to talk about individuals. I want to talk about Mason Mount. But there was a super chat that was quite insightful there, Ricky. Um, and they were, they were talking about the wingers. Obviously, there's so many different elements that are going wrong. But I think, I mean, we can talk about so many different elements. But one thing that we're talking about before we went live is the different variations that we can try. You know, Mason Mount got a really good goal today off the left. Ahmad Diallo got a brilliant goal off off the right in the Liverpool game, is the questions to be asked on whether it, maybe they could should be given a chance? Without a shadow of a doubt. We said, we said before the show, and I said before the show, that, that Ahmad got 36 minutes against Liverpool and he's only played 46 minutes in the Premier League all season. And the way the manager's treated him, to me, I think has been appalling. I know you said he's had a few injuries and been missing. But, I'm, again, somebody, I'm sure someone could check it. I think he's been on the bench 12, 15 times. You know, to have 46 minutes on the park when other players are stinking, stinking the plates out is absolutely appalling. And then, out of desperation, really, he puts him on against Liverpool. And not just his goal. He works so hard. He wins the ball back. He passes it well. He's fast. He's a proper decent player. We need to give him... I'm not even saying start him, but trust the kid. Give him half an hour when he's on the bench tonight. Uh, Mason Mount got about 15 minutes. What, what, what are the other players on the pitch doing to make the manager think, I don't take one of them off and put him on? Or a, the same applies to Ahmad when he's on the bench. The same... It's going over old... Uh, you know, what do you call it? Oh, it's just old stuff here, but... The same happened with Palestri. Just always on the bench and getting two minutes. Give the kids a, a decent run. Let's see how they do if you get 20 minutes, five games in a row, or the odd half hour. And the same applies to Mason Mount. Now he's had 10 or 15 minutes today. I'm not against starting him. I wouldn't mind starting him in, in, in the Chelsea game. Not against it. What's the worst but if that you could don't, happen? What's the worst that can happen? But if we don't start him, 
Don't put him on for 10 minutes, put him on for 30 <coughs> minutes. All I'm going to say is Mason Mount played his best football off the left for Chelsea. Obviously, a lot of people, I think his best position is as a, as a, as a cam. And he, maybe, I, I don't think Ten Hag will ever sub Bruno, so I think it's pointless even having that argument, whether people want it or not. Like, he's just not going to do it, so it's That's weird. That's going to get him the sack. He shouldn't, he it's shouldn't it's be untouchable. He should I, not be. Yeah, yeah, no one should be, but it's just a fact. What's the point of talking about it? It's not going to happen. Mm. But you've got to find a way to maybe try and include Mount in your team. I think he offers us a lot that we don't have. He's good on the mm. ball. He wins the ball back really well. His energy is great. And today, off the left, great finish with his left foot. Mm. And, you know, you think about it and you think, against Brentford, we are really struggling to create any sort of chances. I mean, Rasmus had one chance. One chance. And he worked his socks off. One chance that Bruno passes to him. Wingers provided absolutely nothing. They were both terrible today. Gannacho I'm sorry. Rashford, but like, awful. I know Ganacho was playing on Tuesday and he's played a lot of minutes. Rashford, I mean... You know, like, I, it's just, you expect it now. So, you know, Mason Mount, like you said, I think he should have come on earlier. I said at half-time I would have brought Mount on um, to, and I would have played him off the wing as well. And in a game where pacey direct wingers aren't working because there's not much space in behind, to have someone there who can come into the midfield, give you extra legs in there, but also can get forward and, and, and he's good on the ball and, and can look through the lines and, and create... I think it's really important. We need some sort of creativity from the wide areas. Lord knows wan doesn't give it you as a left-back. Dallow's struggling to kind mm. of get up the pitch as, as much as well in this game. I mean, he had a few shots from outside the box, but the winger wasn't really... They, they weren't really working great together. Brentford did really well to kind of interrupt mm. that partnership. So, for me, different options do need to be looked at and we shouldn't be scared to make changes. And like you said, Ricky, it does feel like there's a fear there to change something. It's like... I'd understand it if these players were like pulling up trees every single week, but that's not happening. It's been going on for two years. All the managers, we, we mentioned earlier, didn't we, um, about about the games that we've nicked. It happened last season. We sat here all season saying, "Where are we? Where, how are we? Where we are?" This is last season. Well, even at saying this season, even at that stage of Mount yeah, scoring yeah, this yeah. evening before they equalised within a minute, which was scandalous from our point of view, because I said, you know. Can we see this game out now? And it was like up the other end, bang, you know, and it's a goal. And you know what, Faz? I feel sorry for Mount because that should have been his glory moment. Yeah, and we couldn't, e yeah. couldn't even hold on for a minute. And a good pass by Casemiro, by the way. Great play by Rasmus, kind of like physicality in there. And Anthony actually drags it across really well. It was a well worked goal, but we couldn't hold on for two minutes. Yeah, it's just a story, story of Eric Ten Hag. Why do you think that is? Because it happens horrible. all the time. Yeah, but his in-game management is horrible, but isn't is it? But is it Eric Ten Hag's fault that we that we can see straight away after? after? Like, surely the pay, players on the pitch have to take some responsibility. Well, you've seen Eric Ten Hag, um, which game was it where he's sending defenders up for set-piece? And in like the, the last 10 minutes of the game, he sent Ari Maguire and someone else. Uh, he's sending centre-backs further up on the pitch in a set-piece. Remind me which game it was. Well, we I forgot. Only a couple of games. For, we send centre backs up for set pieces all the time. No, no, no. This is the uh, last five, six minutes of the game mm. when you need to protect. I'm uh, leaving them up there. Yeah, know. when you need to protect the lead. He's, he's done silly things like that before. But as a manager, you're seeing that you, you, you've, you've, your substitute has scored a goal. You're supposed to make the team come back and sit. That's what, protect the lead. That's what you're supposed to do. I don't care if it looks ugly, if it doesn't suit your football, whatever. That's what you're supposed to do. But he's not able to clearly get through to the players. It's just so inevitable he doesn't. He fails to communicate things to the players clearly because it's not it's not a one-time thing. It's a regular occurrence with him. He's had this last season in um, in the Europa League as well. I remember he's had it this season in in the Champions League group stage. He fails to get through to the players in the dying moments of the game. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting point. Here's one for you. Most shots faced since the February the 1st. Man United, 181, top of that list. Luton, 166. Brentford, 161. Sheffield United, 149. West Ham, 149. Burnley, 145. We're right at the top. Like, we're Manchester United. It's, it's embarrassing. You see, we're playing like a relegation team. That's, that's, that's how we play. But we've What's got, the start we've got, we actually have, like, obviously, better individuals. That's what I think is holding us up right now. And you do have... have, to... have got I, don't, I can't work it out. Why we have, have we got better, better individuals than, than who? Than who? Manchester United. I saw Ash, Ashley, I saw Ash, what's he called? Ashley, is he called Ashley Barnes who came on as a sub for Newcastle today? 
been injured all season. Mm. He scored two absolute peaches from the left wing. You know what I mean? He looks miles better than our wingers to me, and he can't get in Newcastle's team. I mean, <laughs> this is I wanted to discuss the goal that obviously we conceded. Even obviously we deserved to concede, but we should have held out, and it was a bottle job that we didn't. But Ricky, the goal that we conceded. I mean, first of all, wan Bissaka's playing them all on side, and that wasn't the first mm. time it happened that game. I just don't understand why Dallo has played left back for so many times. Like. I wouldn't have persisted. I, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a tough. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. I did say on the build-up show to be fair, Mitt Wan Bissaka maybe just go to left back. So I don't want to be hypocritical, but it wasn't wasn't a good performance from him. But also, like we spoke about, how Martinez got twisted and turned, which for me is unlike him. But you had a comment to say about it. It's just not. It, what Ivan Tone is. It's, it's a tough one because Ivan Tone is such a tough opponent. He's such a strong player. You know, we want to sign him, obviously. He's a top, top player. In the first half, he twisted Lindelof and got a shot in, didn't he? That was a little bit different in that he was running at Lindelof, using his pace, and Lindelof trying, you know, just tried to hold him up. There wasn't really much different that Lindelof could have done. Um, could, could go towards him, but you don't want to tackle him in the box either. But either way, it's a different situation. Um, I believe Lindelof and Maguire are both decent at the situation that Martinez found himself in, where they've got the defender up against them and they can use the body strength to try and hold them and force them towards the touchline. He shook, he shook Martinez off like he was like a rag doll, really. Martinez was just just nowhere near strong enough, and he put and he pulled it back in, pulled it back into the box. Um, while I'm on Martinez, he also tried to clip a ball on the halfway line. Only a twenty yard ball. He didn't go high enough. Went straight to one of their players, and he broke away. There was a there was a volley clearance on the edge of the box that should have gone to the halfway line. It went straight up in the air, and we ended up under pressure. Um, the manager's going to watch this back, and I know he's been injured for a while. Um, but when you're injured for a while and you come back and, you, and you're on the bench, you're supposed to be on the bench because you're perfectly fit enough to, to, to you know, to give your manager half an hour or whatever it might be. Now, Lindelof's obviously it looked like a hamstring. Uh, I'm not sure what it was with Varane. We might only have Maguire and Martinez for Stamford Bridge uh, on Thursday night. Uh, who else is missing already? Oh, uh, Johnny Evans missed today, didn't he? Mm -hmm. But I think he was pretty close. Um, so on, on Thursday night, it'll be very interesting what he does if Evans is fit and he's got Maguire and, and Martinez because Martinez today didn't look out of races to me one little bit. Yeah, it was. It was. He, I just think for me today with Martinez, to be fair, he did get turned for the goal. Like mm. he's one of my favourite players, but he did, and his passing was well off for him. Mm. I just don't think he was ready. But again, injuries for Yeah, he has, he has been that. injured, like you've, you've rightly said. I, I just think that was a very difficult game to be thrown into, especially because mm -hmm. we were under the cosh. And I'm glad you said, you know, because Ivan Tony could do, do that to anybody. anybody. Yeah. He can. He can. So it's. He could do it to Harry good? Maguire. It doesn't good? matter if you're yeah. physical or whatever. I just, think, He's just... I just think it was too easy. I'll put it that way. Yeah. I think, oh. You know, he, he could do that to another player. But I don't think he'd find it quite you say so you easy. Should, it, you it should shouldn't be cutting be out so that cross. It I'm not be. saying necessarily cut it out. It's just so easy. Mm. And, and if you watch it back, you see Martinez grabbing his shirt and trying to stop him. And it's just, it's, honestly, it's, it's, a just, handful it's for nothing anyone, short of pathetic, honestly. That, that effort by Martinez to stop it. I'm not saying if it would have been Maguire or Lindelof against him, he might still have got the cross in, but he wouldn't have found it so easy. It and so people, easy. Pe we've, we've faced 100 shots in the last four games, right? And people, fans would sit there and tell me, oh, Martinez is missing. Mm. Like, Martinez was going to stop 60 other shots. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't make any, doesn't any make fucking sense. sense. <laughs> the, the, the delusion the, the, that these fans have fallen into they think with they've this got scam Superman of a manager. Injured, don't they? Sorry? They think they've got Superman. Superman, injured. yeah. He's, he's going to block everything. Team, yeah, gonna he's going to he's gonna block everything. He's going to make everything all right. <laughs> it, it can make, make it all better, the passes better. Because you've got a player that can play out from the back. Yeah, that helps if you can play out from the back. But the amount of shots that you're conceding, a lot, even though they had a few shots from inside the box, of course they did. They had 30-odd shots. I'm sure at least 20 of them were probably from outside the box or the edge of the box. It's not down to your back four, that. That's down to your midfield and your forwards. So you've got to hold, up better, hold the ball better and you've got, to, you've got to get in a better block to, you know, to stop them getting to there. The defenders, uh, 
you know, if you think about shots from the edge of the box and outside the box, it's generally midfield players or defenders that are having them shots, isn't yeah. it? It's not usually the forward so much, it's usually midfield players or defenders. Look at our shots today, Dalot, you know what I mean, from outside the box. So, so if if you're conceding loads and loads of shots, a lot of them shots are down to your midfield players and your forwards, not, not your defenders. I was just going to mention the forwards because mm-hmm. I, I think that is a great point. I know we touched on it before, but when you've got Rashford and Garnacho, who were pretty much non-existent, you've then back to that stage where you've got Hoyland, who's just running around like headless chicken. Mm. There's no press. There was, there was nothing from the front three. And we spoke about it in the build-up, didn't we, saying that uh, it will be a tricky game, Brentford, but... If we can get the, the ball up to Hoyland and he can hang on to it and get us up the pitch, but it just never struggled sort it, of then. yeah, it never transpired at all like that today. How can how can Brentford at home be so comfortable with us having the ball? How? Mm. Like like make it make sense. That's you, I'm glad you brought that game. You, up. you see when we have the ball in the... I think, so you know it, we're not going to create anything. In the first yeah. half. But even if we're not creating anything, right? Okay, fair enough. Why the, the the manager himself is comfortable with with the team sitting back and and keeping their shape? Why can't we do that? You're telling me Manchester United players cannot keep shape. Okay, they can't play a pass, they can't shoot, they can't tackle, they they they're useless. They're not Man United quality. They're this, they're that. They're Sunday league. Well, You're position. telling me a professional bunch of athletes cannot keep shape. Because the manager is telling them, when you have 30 yards between this, in any given game, there may be four or five defensive lines. Every, every line of player is a defensive line. You have to st- attack us all the way to the back line. You're telling me the manager cannot set up the team so that they keep line and their press is all synchronised with the whole team. How can Brentford do it? How can Thomas Frank, who is Thomas Frank? Which, which Champions League heritage does Thomas Frank have? But this so-called Eric Ten Hag is such a great manager, he can't teach 11 players to, to have shape off the ball. Or even when they have the ball, every single player, bar Kobe Mino, because it's just his individual performance, every single player looks clueless. They don't know who to pass to, they don't know which player is going to be where. First few minutes, I remember you saying, why have you hoofed the ball? Ten Hag, when he got asked on how many, if he's concerned on how many shots faced, he said, as long as we get results, no, we lost many second balls and then you have to defend the box. That's what we did quite well and we had a great goalkeeper. We concede shots, but we don't concede many goals. This guy, is, he's a liar. He's, he's, I don't even want to... I don't it's even just, want I just to say wish, what I, want I to honestly say. wish He's that. He, liar. I honestly wish he would have just come out and taken accountability and said, that's not good enough. Um, and that performance was Bro, and terrible. Costa Coglu, and, yeah, the I, and yeah, I am concerned about the number of shots because at some point, we're not gonna hit the, they're not going to hit the crossbar three or four times. They're going to go in. Mm. You know, all you need is someone to be a bit more clinical. I understand that a lot of the times we do frustrate teams and, you know, some shots are outside the box and. There is different sort of scenarios, but it's a common theme that Man United are conceding ridiculous amounts of shots. That is poor. And I think one of the big issues for that, which I wanted to bring up actually on the show, and then we'll get to some super chats, is we were speaking about this in the game. We are not patient in the final third. When we actually get to the final third, we're not patient and we don't work the ball at all. Sometimes I wonder if the players are actually capable of keeping the ball um, in, in tight areas because they just don't seem like they want to do it. Hence why it's embarrassing that they had 85, shot, uh, 85 touches in, in our box. We had 13 in theirs. Um, shows shows what, what, we, what we were like in them scenarios. So what will happen is we'll take stupid shots or, you know, we'll, we'll try these Hollywood balls that are just one in like 100 of coming off. And then what happens is our structure, players are completely out of shape. They can counter us and we've got got no one there and you see 2v2 you see 2v1 and and we're in trouble like Maguire backtracking not his fault his midfield aren't there his forward players aren't there it's like today I saw Bruno at one stage we were talking about this we just won the ball back and Wambasaka was out of position loads of people out of position first thought is take a shot from like outside the box keeper collects it Passes it straight back out. No one's in the shape. Like it's it's silly. Like you've got to have like some in-game intelligence to kind of spot these things, and we do it time and time again, and we get cut through. And I, 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 what was it? Uh, Ten Hag was saying there. He was pleased with. 
We don't concede many we goals, don't concede but many we goals. are 17th in the league for goals conceded. I don't know. The man is concussed. Oh, Prime Music says we are 17th in the, in the league Even, with goals yeah. conceded, yeah. I mean, XG, Brentford 3.1, United 0 0.5, 1. <laughs> um, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it have just been nice, right? As, as supporters, all you want is honesty. You know, and I, I, I understand that Ten Hag probably won't come out for that reason, but all he has to do at the end of this game, just say, you know, that was really, really shit. You know, and I'm going to speak to the players or I'm going to keep them back this evening. There'll be a full inquest and we, we, we have a conversation to see how they can put in a performance like that in the FA Cup, that last game at Old Trafford. And then you go from that to basically that tonight. You know, I'd rather him say it's not good enough. It's not what, you know, I'm expecting. He did, he did say it wasn't good enough, to be fair. Like, he did say, and he said Brentford looked like they wanted to win more than us. But at the same time, I'm like, how are Brentford Why, looking yeah, like how? they want to win? When these players, by the way, if they get Champions League football, they get wage increase for a start. But not only that, surely you want to be playing Champions League football. If I, like, brought an alien down from out of space, taught him about football, and then showed him that, that game and said, this is a team that is, like, make or Brentford, break for Champions League. You think Brentford were the treble winners? Yeah. You think we were playing the treble winners? Yeah. Here? And you say, this is a team that's make or break for Champions League football here. This is, this is what we've got. You wouldn't believe it. Why can we not get up for that? Yeah. And again, you do have to look at the manager because he, sh he. We too many times this season, Ten Hag's come out and said, "We, the other team looked like they wanted it more than mm. us. Why? Why but, can you? Why? Uh, uh, why? Uh, is, the alarm why? bell's not ringing at right. that stage. Another team that, any team that plays United always wants to beat United. That's we've had that all, all over the years because we were successful. But now, you know, at least back then we, we were winning, we were competitive. But now it's, it, it's crazy to think that, t it, how can a manager use that as an excuse and say the, the other team just wanted it more today? It's sacrilege, it's, mm. it's madness. Can I just say something, yeah. Beth? Someone's put a super chat here, I'll right? Bring him in in a yeah, second, actually. But I just want to make this, this point. Shetty says, honestly, with this bunch will not help. They'll throw him under the bus. He's waiting for the summer to get rid of the poor attitudes and inconsistent players in the squad. At least we have Ineos now. I'm really, really sorry, but that is the most fickle and pathetic thing to say for a manager to protect your manager. The reason why you say that is because he soothes your PTSD. I've said it before and I'll say it again. And I'll tell you why. Today, in our start in 11, is Rasmus Hoyland throwing him under the bus? No, he's trying his socks off. Yeah. Is Kobe Mino throwing him, under, throwing him under the bus? Trying his socks off. Is Varane throwing him under the bus? No. Nope. Is Lindelof throwing him under the bus? Trying his socks Is Dalo off. throwing him under the bus? Socks is off. Onana throwing him under the bus? Oh. Is Bruno Fernandes throwing him under the bus? No. Stop this mediocrity and a load of bollocks. That's mm. what it is. Mm. You, were, you, were, you were fed a scam, you got scammed, and you don't like it as a fan. Mm. You don't like that you believed in this manager so much and it's all gone to shit. That's what it is. He didn't mention Scott McTominay. Scott what, McTominay what, what as well, sorry. He's trying his socks off. Absolutely trying his socks off. I agree. I don't think the players have, <laughs> I don't think the players have down tools on Ten Hag. I don't believe that narrative. I don't. Mm. There's issues, for sure mm. there's issues. But that isn't that isn't something that I get when I watch these players. There's no level of consistency, and the style of play one is the one that I I, I live in hope that we will start to see it. But I, I don't know. Is it the play the players aren't good enough? I think. Or some of them. I sit here and I sit here and I question. I'm really sorry. I'm really really sorry, Kev. If that's the case, then Eric Ten Hag needs needs the best start in eleven players in the entire world, and then he will do well. He did it. He, the players are not good enough. It, it's an excuse that we use every game. But then when I, I say, think when I say Zidane Zidane enough, and people say Zidane this, Zidane that, oh, Zidane had the best players in the world. Well, I'm sure Eric Tanag would have done a good job with them 11 players in Real Madrid as well. Anyone would have. So is Eric Tanag only the type of manager that does well with fantastic well, world-class players? Well, he's signed some of the players, aren't they? And some of the players he's signed are not good enough. <laughs> as I, well. I think it's a mix. I think... I'd say a lot of our players are overhyped and overrated and are not as good as what people think. But also at the same time, the coaching is way under par. Like it's a mix. I really do think it's a mix right now. Um, it's been a running theme. Don't hasn't think it? you can blame it solely on one thing. There's there's a lot of very varying factors 
in, in what that result was. And they've been going on. It's not for, been easy. I don't know if you long. saw the Jose Mourinho interview with Fabrizio that came out, I think, two yeah, days I've ago. And Jose said, in every other club, I've been a coach, where certain other clubs, I haven't been coach. And he listed the clubs, and he didn't list Manchester United in the club he was a coach. Because in Manchester United, he was a coach, he was a technical director, communications, whatever, all of the things that he needed to do other than coach on the pitch. And I sympathise with Eric. I really do sympathise with him, the fact that he has to probably deal with so much shit, right? But guess what? A PE teacher did better with this team. And you saw football that you enjoyed. Whether the results didn't go your way, go your way you enjoyed the football. A, per a coach who is apparently washed, his football is old school, he got you results and got you trophies. A manager who left Manchester United has more European heritage than Eric Ten Hag. His name is David Moyes. So make of that what you will. No, oh, come on. But he does though, isn't he? Am I lying? Am I making up the fact? No, you're not, but... A club that's never been to European final went back-to-back -back European final with a manager that's washed. And his, and his football is old school. A manager who's not good enough for Manchester United, left Manchester United, took a, took a mid-table team to European final and won it. It's, what, we don't have good enough players. Our players are shit. Okay, I'll go with that. I think... I think you're saying a lot of things, Faz, and I, and I get where you're coming from, but there's, you know, there's all, there's, there's so many different factors to this. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was, I love Ole as a player, but and I've wanted him to succeed as a manager so badly. Yeah, we all did. But yeah. towards the end, it was yeah, horrible. Sure. It was horrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's and true. And it's gonna, he also, David he also Moyes came second. David is nowhere near the level of he what also Man United needs second. as a manager, and Ten Hag is a better manager. He than also David came Moyes. second and scored 100 plus goals with the front line. And on top of that, if that final that he lost on penalties didn't happen, this would have been a totally different conversation. That's true. Football. It's a, re a results-based business and sometimes things, you know, when at the end of the day, you, you, at the end of the day, history doesn't remember, oh, if only David Dea scored a penalty, it remembers Oli not winning a trophy. And yeah, sadly, yeah. I wish he did. Mm. I wish he yeah. did. And Ten Hag, when, whenever he leaves, will remember he won a trophy in his first season, yeah, yeah, yeah. whether the football was worse yeah. or not. On, on the subject of David Moyes and Ten Hag, and people might laugh, but... Obviously, Moyes, the club, it was too big the job for him at United. Obviously, United didn't, at that stage had never finished more than third, and they finished seventh, seventh. And, obviously, and obviously he got a boot. But he did a fantastic job with Everton for about ten years, keeping them in the top six, top six or seven. That rarely the rarely finished well, out yeah. of the top six. Uh, that was only Everton, and now he's gone to West Ham again. And he's doing well with West Ham again. You know what I mean? They're only just behind us in the league. You know, with the quality of squad that they're supposed to have. He's doing, a, he's doing a good job with West Ham. Now, and now I know Ten Hag did great with... I know Ten Hag did great at... at um, Ajax. Ajax. But they are, you can also look at it a different way. Would those teams have done as well if they had Ten Hag? I don't, we don't know the answer. But I, he, can't, you know. I can't believe I'm sat on a United forum speaking about David Moyes. I know, I feel like I've come back in time like, or something. I'm, so, I'm sorry, like... You know, you, you, you know, you said he's a better manager. I'm just saying there's no proof. I, there's no proof and you don't know. And that's my opinion. Yeah, it's, it's, no, yeah. no one can ever say I've it's I've not got a, an opinion on no it. No one can say it's, it's a fact. It's just not proof. It's, it's, there's no proof. You know, he, he does great with, with decent mid table you know, mid to upper table teams in the Premier League. And the, and the funniest well, thing is... Level. Which is what we are now, but yeah. we're Man United. <laughs> and you know the funniest thing is, Manchester United will go and play Coventry in the FA Cup semi-final, will probably be... Coventry, then get to the final. I'm and, not so sure. And and <laughs> maybe maybe if 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 <laughs> the temperature and the humidity is right, then maybe we might win the final. And people will say Eric Ten Hag is fantastic, he's amazing. Maybe so because he he won a trophy. <laughs> but the theory still remains: this manager is a specialist in knockout football. I've already put it out there. After all the data that is out there, you look at all the data. He is a knockout tournament specialist. That's what he does. What happened in the Champions League? I was going to say it didn't do Well, he well got enough. to the semi-final. No, I think with me with United. Well, it wasn't knockout stages, was it? He's a knockout True. stage specialist. True, yeah. True. Um, 
I mean, got some super chats coming. I've got to get through these, and then we're going to talk about a couple of other things. Sahaj Sessi says, to dominate the ball in the midfield, we need game intelligence, technique, and aggression. Unfortunately, we have been counter-attacking since Oli took over, and it's a huge shift for some of them. It's a fact. I agree with that as well, actually. Jamie Giolalo says, games are won in the midfield. McTominay should not be anywhere near our starting midfield, and Cassie comes on for Manu. Are you kidding me? Prime Music said, United employs mid-table players, which is why we are mid-table team. Um, who in this team gets enough top four team? Playaholic says, how can Eric Ten Hag be afraid to bench last sub Rashford and Bruno after benching the GOAT Ronaldo? I don't understand. And his play style is kick and pray. Domingo OT says, Eric Ten Hag is tactically inept and the majority of the team are bang average. F Thomas Atkinson says, football under Ollie was terrible. Paul Song says, Rashford Bruno will always let their teammates down by their attitude on the pitch. <sighs> I can't think you can single out their two attitudes, but I mean, okay. Keel Robinson says, Eric Ten Hag um, is Heisenberg. Sherlock says, if you take make a combined 11 of Brentford and United, apart from Tony, the rest will be United. No decent manager will set up the way Ten Hag did and concede 31 shots to a team in the relegation battle. Interesting point. By the way, how good's Tony? Can't believe people yeah. said they didn't want him. <laughs> it's crazy to me. Juan Campo, we are fourth in the league for goals conceded, not 17th. We'll have to fact check that then. Uh, Two different. If anyone can get up the actual facts, let me know because I was just going off what you said. I think it was shots said. conceded, not goals uh, conceded. We, we must, yeah, we're really uh, low down in the table for shots, shots conceded. conceded. Okay, so goals, Ten Hag was right then. We've not yeah, conceded yeah, as many as what, goals. Yeah, what goals people conceded think. Yeah. isn't horrendous. So sorry. What's we, our goal difference anyway? Let's rewind because we did say about that. Yeah. That zero. Thing. You were saying <laughs> <Still> zero, <laughs> zero before you, today. You were goals conceded. You were saying Ten Hag's concussed. So we was right on that point. He had his facts right. Right. The issue is we don't score enough Might not as well. be that badly concussed then. Mm. Um, Ovan02 says, has Rashford been any better than Anthony this season? S. Aiden says, please remind me the last time we dominated for 90 minutes. I don't remember. Prime Music, um, I've done that one. And Robert McCormack says, a top striker is happy to be up against Martinez. Trusty. That is... In a corner kick, I was seeing um, um, Tony and Martinez. I was like, this is bad. MW, yeah. Aberdeen and Manchester United have both beautiful. Both went downhill since Sir Alex Beth. Uh, Sir Alex left. You're beautiful, Beth. Thank you, MW. Um, Thomas Atkinson says, the only common denominator in the last decade are the players, different managers, different tactics, same result. Kia says, we know United need an open heart surgery. Why are we pretending that our condition can be fixed by merely taking medication? Rory C says, was Eric Ten Hag's Champions League run like Leicester? Just a fluke that happens once every so often. Are any of those players excelling these days? There is players that have excelled. Jim's 91, how Bruno and McTominay plays 130 minutes is criminal. Bad subs. King Lee says, at this point you can't blame the players because it's the same guy being sent out in the same shape week in, week out. This means we're clearly doing what the manager wants on the pitch and in training. Wayne Ramsey says, hey, that's true. Why is... Ten Hag, why would Ten Hag not change the players if they weren't doing what he instructed them to do? Um, that's a good point. Wayne Ramsey says, you can't moan about injuries if you keep Rashford on. You have players to bring on. Does the coach really think we, they will be worse? You can't make excuses for Ten Hag. He has the ability to make the changes. Rory C says, to the panel, is Eric Ten Hag your man? I don't care about replacements. Is Ten Hag good enough? I mean, we'll talk about that a little bit. We've covered it a little bit. We'll have that as like a final question at the end. Martin Saunders says, Beth, the players are to take blame. Ten Hag is afraid of a certain six. Um, I don't know what the rest... He says, it says, tell Maud we want the real one back. I don't know what that means. Uh, Marius says, I'm starting to miss Ollie. And Robert McCormack says, will he be thrown... Will Mount be thrown in at the deep end at Chelsea? Jack D says, such a depressing result. Give Dowell the captaincy. And Shane Day says, why do we travel to London today? What professional team does this these days? I want Eric Ten Hag to prove me wrong, but it's not happening. Tom Edwards says, um, Ten Hag in. I'm on board now too. We deserve him. Say goodbye to that season. I've done that one. Thank you everyone for your super chats. I'll come back to the last remaining fruit at the end. Really appreciate the contributions, despite obviously the, 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 the horrible performance that we encountered. But Can I want to get a poll, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's your poll? Eric Ten Hag in or okay, out? Okay, we'll do poll Ten Hag in or out for the remaining. Oh my God, we've only got like seven minutes left. C couple quick points. First point, Kev. Varane likely is going to be let go of United in the summer. I think it's a bad decision. I think we should keep him. What do you think? I think it would be a bad decision. I think it really boils down to the the move for Varane. Uh, 
and the, the whispers want there about it being like reduced Saudi. wages uh, if he stays yeah, at Man yeah. United. I yeah. mean, if, if United could get that deal done, I think experience-wise, he's he is a Rolls Royce. Uh, it'd be somebody I'd look to keep, but obviously it could be out of United's hands really because yeah, if you get the Saudi bid. It could make uh, perfect sense for both uh, the player and the club, but uh, I'd be looking at keeping him, I think, experience-wise for somebody at the back there. Uh, but I, I, I think there's going to be loads of changes in the summer now, every week, because you don't get this consistency with United. You just kind of start looking at players and think, just get rid, get rid. There's so many of them now, and there's so much dead, what I would class as dead wood from previous managers, whatever, uh, and that's why I do think that Ten Hag deserves a bit more time to try and at least get the players in that he wants. I think there's still a lot of players that need to go. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, bored, I'm, I'm bored with that. Someone did point out the fact that the poll might be reactionary because of the result, but you wanted the but poll. But that's not fair you because when Ten Hag, win, when Man United win and players get individual goals, people say it's Eric Ten Hag. When we lose, yeah, but if we'd have done this players. last week after the Liverpool win and said Eric been, Ten Hag in, in or out, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but but we have done in in uh, throughout the season. We've done in and out polls throughout the season, and I've been keeping screenshots of them. So people say I'm a flip flop. We'll see how much of the flip flop the manager and the fans I, are. I really, I really do, I really do think that three players that can walk off with their held, head held high today would be Varane, um, Lindelof. Thought Lindelof was really good. And Don't think he was that good. Did you not? No, I thought he was, was backing really off way too much for my liking. Him. So Anana yeah. was better come in on, the second come half. Come on, fans, be, be, have, a, have a bit of a. What's the word? I think Dallas was the, the, If I, the, if I was going to say look, three. Look, they're absolutely battering us from start to finish. Yeah. That's not the defender's fault. It's the midfield players and the forwards. Players not the defender's front, yeah. fault at sure. all. Sure, but in one, def- 1v1s, so, he's, so, he's so, awful. Yeah, maybe so, but we let one goal in. I think the defenders all deserve a bit of credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could have been a different story. they could have had six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I was... It may be that one time <clears> where Tony cut in, but <clears> again, Tony's just... Literally top draw, sure. but mm. I thought Lindelof did decent. Like we didn't concede while he was on the pitch. Mm. So um, mm. and Anana. I would have given it Dallow instead of Lindelof. Yeah, Dallow was good too, mm. but just Ana- the defenders. Really. Anana, Anana mm. was. Yeah, that shot where brilliant. Tony. I, th- I think you've got to give credit to Tony there. Like you said earlier, Lindelof is trying to hold him up. He's kind of running <laughs> and just trying to keep him away, isn't it? But yeah. Tony, it's and he does a really quick yeah. flick of the foot. You know yeah. what's Lindelof supposed to do? He's mm. he's wrapped mm. him up. Mm. Tony Swinton said, man of the match was the post. <laughs> 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 that, honestly, that is so true. Um, but, yeah, well, lastly, I just want to talk about it a tiny little bit before we wrap up. Andre Anana in 2024, I mean, he kept us in that game and, you know, made a really, really good save, was pretty solid. I do think, Faz, do you think is he starting to um, make you feel more secure? It's not mine. Is he starting to make you feel more secure? Um, yeah, yeah, most definitely. He most definitely is. It's a shame that that goal difference is at zero at the moment, and probably some of his good attributes and good moments in the game is being, um, you know, hindered by our our score lines and our performance. But he's definitely grown into his position quite a bit. I he still does. Oh, like for example, Maguire has good performances, right? And people say, "Oh, Maguire, well done." I say, I say all the time. I think someone's that? microphone is dying or something. Don't dying. know what the That's heck is that? Um, battery's low or something. But anyways, you know, Maguire has good performances, and people say, "Oh, Maguire can stay. He's had decent performances. He's long overdue giving us decent performances." That's the same energy I'm going to have for Onana. He he was one of the you know pivotal reasons why we got knocked out of the Champions League. So I want to see how how he finishes the season, and maybe if we you know, get into a European competition next season, see how he does there, and then I'll, I'll be able to decide. What is decide. that sound? I don't know what that sound... There's a sound coming through that I have no idea what it is. Um, it's annoying. We're going to wrap up in a second mm. anyway. But yeah, Inanna, I think... I really apologise, it's me. My microphone battery is low. OK. It's telling you to shut up. It is. <laughs> it's telling you to, you've had enough talking it for is. tonight. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, lastly, Ricky, what would you say to a lot of people that are going in on McTominay? Are a lot of people going in on McTominay? Yeah, who, saying he shouldn't be, shouldn't be starting for United. Maybe not, but uh, there's not much... Kind of, I think it's I've not, ju- it's not you. No. Oh. It's not, it's something over there, I don't know what it is, but go on. Um, 
there's just too many players who are. I don't. I don't see any reason why he should be singled out. Let's put it that way. Yeah. You it know? wasn't just him that had a bad yeah, game. Yeah. The, the the horrible thing with United is it, it, it's almost infectious the way these players. We don't just have one or two players that are off it, and then you can use your substitutions and go, let's just say Rashford's off it, right, let's make a substitution. It's infectious at United, and you get about seven or eight players a game that have a bad game, and that's, that's the, a main concern uh, for United and Ten Hag. Yeah, there's, yeah, well, no, there's no reason to single out. I think, I, think, I think we've already touched on, or I've already touched, yeah, when, when Faz was talking about the players that are trying, there's no doubt whatsoever, if anybody wants to say he's not trying, then go and watch a different sport. He, you know, he's running up and down, he's, you know, he's putting himself about, he's doing the best he can. So just like most of the players, you know, they, they're trying, um, most of the players are trying the best they can, but Marcus Rashford doesn't look like he's trying as best he can to me. There's, there's one player who maybe you, sh- you could be saying isn't signed as, as well as he could do. The, you, you well, know, Scott McTominay is a very easy target. Mm. It's a very easy target mm. and he gets labelled as Scooby-Doo because some people have labelled him as Scooby-Doo and in any given game, they just blatantly decide not to watch some of the actions he does. When Marcus Rashford is there, they don't, they don't say anything or pe- people don't want to bring that up. And the mm. same people who do that to him, did that to Fred, did that to Matic mm. and now all of a sudden we miss Fred. Mm. Mm. We miss Fred's legs in the midfield. Same way they'll miss Scott McTominay if he was sold this summer. I miss Fred. <laughs> um, but on, on, a, on a, I mean, let's remember when Ralph Rannick said we needed open heart surgery. I think it's very easy to just target the manager. It's very easy to just say Bruno and Rashford. It's very easy to say McTominay. I don't think there's one sole reason as to why Man United I keep having these poor performances. Coach has to take responsibility. Definitely, of it's, course it's he the, does. As we've said, but time players and, time again, and recruitment and the backstory and everything shape, else. Not the shape, the structure. The structure. Yeah. We need to. We need to do what I've said. We need the wingers to step back a little bit. We need Bruno to step back a little bit. Let them have it in the final third. Let's just play differently. Mid block. And I don't mean, yeah, yeah, let them have it in the Mid final block. third. Let's let's not try and win it off them in their penalty area. Let, let's be honest, the number of times they pour through us, and, and, and how often do we actually win it off them and actually score from, from trying to win the ball yeah. off them in their box? Barely. You know, just just set back a little bit. Let them have it there. They want to, whoever we're playing, they want to come forward. They want to try and get into our half. If we start off when it goes out, say, for a goal kick, instead of being on the edge of the box, let's just be 15 yards deeper and let them have it there. They're not going to do us any harm from yeah. there and they're also not going to pass it through you from there. And they are capable. We've got, we've got, capable to, we've got to wrap up. We've got to wrap up the yeah, show, yeah. everyone. We've got mm. to wrap up the show. But you know, ending on Ricky's words of, of wisdom, we've got over two thousand votes in the poll. Ten Hag in our row, and it actually is fifty three percent in. Wow, forty seven percent out. So even on a reactionary result, the United Stand community is still with Eric Ten Hag. But, mm. Um, but only by 6%. Oh, yeah. how, how are you guys with it, quickly? As you are obviously out. Oh, yeah. Kev, are you still yeah. in? Yeah, don't see any other... Uh, the people that always say Ten Hag out uh, never give me a good reason of a manager's name that should take the job as well. Don't so. need to. And I'm not ready for the reset. Don't I'll need to that. give you a reason. Don't need the heartache, the reset. Don't need to give you a reason. Did he need to give you a reason after Moise, after Josie, well, after Ole? We'll they run the course. We'll, I don't think Ten Hag has yet. We'll carry on the argument in the group chat. It's been going off in our <laughs> United Stand group chat, by the way, everyone. I wish I could leak the messages. Um, Ricky, you're I'll up. probably be Ten Hag out. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm still I'm still um, still trying to see the process. You've thought of it, you just don't want to say it. That's all it is. No, it's not. It, it is. It's really not. It's really not. If it I is. if I genuinely if I genuinely wanted Eric Ten Hag to be sat, I would sit on here and say. How that. many times have I people would. during I games promise you said? I would. No wonder people say Eric Ten Hag out. Why is he making Kobe? Ma- why is he subbing off Kobe? I, Mano? I, why can, is he I can say. I'm not happy with manager's decisions. I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with that. I can criticise a manager without saying I want him to lose his job. Like, at this moment in time, I don't want him to lose his job. I might get to that point. And if I do, I will sit on this panel and I will say that. But at this moment in time... We got to that point with Solskjaer, didn't we? Where we had to kind of say, run its course now. It's... Southgate, absolutely not a chance on this earth. Like, genuinely. Potter, Southgate. I'd rather put my... Mum in charge of United, you know what I mean? And also, there's many other different factors. I want to give him at least one summer under Sir Jim and and, and the new 
ownership. We'll see how it goes. But at the moment, it's not looking promising. Like, it's not. Yeah. But, yeah, anyway. Um, get through some super chats and then... And then We'll have to wrap up the show. Um, Shaheen Shetty says, we completely forgot when Ragnit said we need open heart surgery. We spoke about that a little bit before. Bacon Lord says, they hit the post more times than we had shots on target. Kenny K. Jube says, at Beth, it's a mix of everything. It doesn't go one way. Many players are not good enough, but let's remove the deadwood first then the manager second if he fails. Darren Maguire says, Ericsson Haag out, but who will we get? Um, S says, Lissandro at CDM with Casemiro would fix the midfield. Aiden, a member for seven months. This is not just the manager, this is not just the players. It's a decade of bad decisions. Fouad Abdu says, the main thing we need is a midfielder that can hold the ball. I agree. Billy Welch says, weekly reminder, we average 1.3 goals a game with any manager, with Bruno and with Rashford leading the way. Uh, Prime Music says, Aston Villa coach has always been viewed as a knockout specialist. Bad point. Thomas McArdle, Ragnick said open heart surgery. Shahid Shetty says, to dominate the ball in midfield, we need game intelligence, technique and aggression. Unfortunately, we've been counter-attacking since Oli took over and it's a huge shift for some of them and that's a fact. We've done all of them. So thank you everyone for all of your chats. Um, yeah, last little point, obviously Hoyland had no service whatsoever. Like, we just don't create chances. It's been a bad day. It's been a bad Saturday night. You know, bank holiday, it's not the result we wanted. We were all excited for United to come back and it just... Even though it was a result, it just feels like a really bad loss because of how poor we were. But, Ricky, thank you very much. Thank you. Kev, enjoy the rest of your bank holiday. I will do. No match of the day tonight. Yeah. Just Sod loads that. of wine. Yeah. Red wine. You're right, yeah. I mean, oh. what time is it? Oh, Wilshire Amateurs versus Winnish Town, Monday, 3 o'clock. That'll no. be the game. It's the That's big the one. That's the game to go to. That's the big one. You There'll be no lack it. of effort in that game. Winnish Town versus Winnershaw. You heard it. Get yourself down there. And Faz... <laughs> You know, I'll be looking forward to reading the group chat later. That's all I'm going to say. Listen, I, I, I put a big paragraph that all of you ignored a couple of weeks ago saying I'm losing sleep thinking about how Manchester United have to set pace in, in the league rather than thinking about catching Spurs and catching the team above. There is a momentum that teams in the league maintain. Right? That's how you go one up or one down. And we've, we, we're not able to keep up with the team. Look at Spurs and look at Thingy today, Villa, Villa today. So top five is, is done. Congratulations to Eric Ten Hag. His, his team didn't lose the game today. And yeah, it is what it is. I just can't stand this manager. I'll just say it straight. Well, and on that note, have a lovely rest of your bank holiday. <laughs> Get some sleep. Or if you're in a different time zone, try and enjoy the rest of your day. We'll love you and leave you here. I mean, hopefully next game we can have a better game to talk about. But thank you everyone for watching and we will see you on the next one.